So I've been looking forward to this day for a while, but I didn't realize how important it was until it happened to me. A few weeks ago, GM released the superchargers for use on their vehicles, or Tesla and GM together. And I did not immediately run out and charge on one. I didn't have an adapter to do it because honestly, I guess I didn't realize how important it was. And so in this video, I finally do have an adapter. I'm finally charging a one. And I also want to tell you guys a little bit on why I feel this is a huge game changer and also why it surprised me and made me a little sad too. So the most obvious thing between a Tesla charger and a regular CCS charger like I have on my Chevy Bolt here is the plug. And the plug is quite a bit different. So back in 2012, when Tesla was developing the Model S, there was not a standardized plug for them to use. And so they went to the governing bodies and said, hey, can we have an exemption to use what we want to use? And they came up with this really cool plug that you see here. And Honestly, this is a really cool plug. It runs AC and DC through the same set of pins. So you only have five pins. You have two power pins, one ground, and two communication pins. Uh, this is in opposed to what they eventually standardized on, which was a hybrid of a J1772 and a two DC power pins. They call it CCS or CCS1 here in the United States, CCS2 in Europe. And so that's what everybody else has been using. It's a big hunking beast of a plug. And I just assumed up until last year that this is what the industry was going to use forever well it turns out in late 2022 tesla came along and said hey we're going to call our plug the north american charging standard and everybody kind of laughed at them and said you guys are being overly presumptuous this isn't a standard but what tesla was saying was hey use our plug and use it on all your vehicles we'll let you charge it our superchargers nobody took them up on it for a while but in May of 2023, so last year, Ford jumped on the bandwagon and said, hey, we're gonna be doing this on all of our vehicles in 2025. They're gonna come NAX standard with the Tesla charge port. And in the meantime, we're gonna throw in some adapters for people to start charging here. Within the next couple months, pretty much every other automaker had signed on board. GM was pretty much second after Ford. And so this year in late winter, Ford and then Rivian got access to the Tesla superchargers. And then in late September, GM got access as well. This should work with all GM EVs from the 2017 Bolts through to the newest Silverados or Blazers or Equinoxes, this works. Now, there was a comment by GM that some of the 19s and 20 Bolts might need a software update. I don't think that's the case. This is basically a raw stock 2020 Bolt, uh, which if you know anything about Bolts, there was even a battery recall. I never had that done. I never had the software updates. This thing is basically, I think, bone stock from the factory. So I don't think any of the 19s or 20s do need software updates. Maybe if you want to use the My Chevy app to charge. So I don't have any connectivity features or anything like that on my car. I don't want to pay the OnStar subscription. Uh, so I just use the Tesla app. It works great for what I need. And I'll show you how I do that. First of all, you'll need to install the Tesla app on your phone. At the top of the front screen, you'll see a thing that says find your charger or find a charger. And there'll be a map there that displays all of the chargers around you. Now, you really do need to set up your vehicle. I've already set mine up here. You can see it's this Chevy Bolt with the NAX adapter. You can add more vehicles by hitting manage vehicles and, and add them here. So I would definitely recommend you put in your vehicle before you go looking at the map and deciding on a charger. And the reason for that is not all the superchargers are available for charging on a non-Tesla. You really have to check the app before you go to make sure that it is a V3 or greater supercharger. I know there's a V2 nearby here. That will have a sign near it that says you can't charge at the supercharger. So put your vehicle in the app before you go to the supercharger just to make sure it's available. You can also do this in my Chevy app. That will only show the ones that are available for charging uh, there. Once you have your connection, you can find the supercharger you're at. This is where I am right now. You click the little icon, it comes up. 11 of 12 cells available. You'll also see it says NAX DC adapter required to charge. That means that this is open for non-Teslas. So hit charge here. Uh, now you will see, I have my payment information already in here. You'll see the price per kilowatt hour, and then you need to choose your post number. So I am at post 3D, click start charging. 
Now, I'm not plugged in yet, so it comes up and it tells me all the directions of how to do this. So it says, take the adapter, plug it onto the handle, and then plug this into your vehicle. So let's do that. Before we get charging, let's talk about this adapter. Electron sent this to me. It's called their Vortex adapter. It takes a NACS plug on the one end, goes to the CCS1 on the vehicle side, um, let me just show you a little bit about it. I love the quality of this thing. It is really nice and beefy. It almost feels metallic because of the way it's so solidly constructed. And I believe this is also the official adapter that GM is selling for the Bolt. I had ordered one of those, but it was gonna take a few weeks because it was back ordered. And then Lectron reached out to me and said, hey, we wanna send you this guy to review. I said, sure. Let's do that. So I have the Electron. I'm not disappointed at all by the quality. I think this is a super high quality adapter. Uh, all the latches are metal. It has a nice weight to it, which is surprisingly reassuring when you're running 50 kilowatts through something like this. And it's not that this can only take 50 kilowatts, it's that my bolt can only take 50 kilowatts. Electron says this guy can do 500 amps at 1,000 volts, which is 500 kilowatts, which is more than I think any EV out there today can do. So I'm barely, taxing this thing on my bolt. To use this guy, all you do is take the Tesla cable here, you plug it into the NAC side of the connector. So you depress this little latch on the bottom and slide it in. It goes in really easily. It's nice and locked onto it at that point. Now at this point, you can just plug this into your vehicle. And as long as you are all set up and already activated in the app, it should start charging within a few seconds. Now there's one other thing I wanted to talk about with supercharging a non-Tesla at a Tesla charging station, and that has to do with the cable and where you park. So if you notice here, I am parked to the right of this charging spot. I'm actually in the hashed area at the end of the supercharging stalls. And the reason for that is my charge port is on the driver's front side of my vehicle. Tesla charge ports are always at the driver rear, which means they back in and the shorter supercharger cables are made to perfectly plug in with your vehicle when you're back into each stall. This works for other vehicles with charge ports in that location, but for vehicles like the Bolt or the Equinox or the Blazer that have it at the front of the driver's side, you kind of have to park in the spot next to the supercharger, which blocks it for the next Tesla coming in. And this ends up being a problem that propagates down the line. So if it's available, park to the far right supercharger off the end. Um, if it's not very busy like this station, it's not a huge deal either because you're gonna have uh, allowances as, you know, there's not that many charging spots taken up. But if it's really full, uh, definitely be mindful of where you're parking because you don't wanna impede other people from getting a charge. Now, the newer V4 superchargers that are coming online, they have longer cables and there may actually be some extension cables in the future that can help out with this. But for now, this is kind of the situation. Be careful where you park. So there's a couple ways to end the charge. You can do it on the infotainment screen or you can do it in the app. I like to use the little button on the Tesla charge handle. You push that button, wait for the car to unlock. Then you can depress the J1772 latch, pull the entire assembly off, hit the button on the bottom of the adapter and pull that off and you're done. So I was not expecting this to be as big of a deal as it ended up feeling to me. And why is that? Well, I live on the East Coast of the United States. We don't have a ton of EVs here and our charging options are very limited, especially when we're on road trips. And so you'll go out and you might have a charger every 50 miles at the best. And at the worst, it's 100 miles uh, between chargers. And so what this amounts to is a lot of anxiety as you're out there road tripping around. And Tesla owners, like all the other folks here, you can laugh at me about that and say, hey, we've had it this way for years. I know you have. Uh, and we're just late to the party. Now, the interesting thing is, as soon as I turned on the app to see how many more chargers I had, the number of chargers in my area more than doubled DC fast chargers, including superchargers. And this is a huge factor when it comes to road trips. I can confidently go pretty much everywhere in the United States now and find a relatively fast charge. And that's something I haven't seen a lot of people talk about with this opening up of the supercharger network is how much more convenient this is gonna be for non-Tesla drivers uh, just to be able to go wherever they want. Range anxiety is pretty much non-existent anymore. You also can go to chargers, and if there's one that's full, you have other options to go to. And that makes a huge difference in just the security and the feeling of um, you know, not being stranded somewhere. Now, I'm a little bit sad about this because it was kind of fun 
the risk. Um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the adventure of it, the going out there and having to plan and figure everything out. I think we're rapidly moving away from that, which is good for broader adoption and just for the fact of getting more people in EVs, more comfortable with them. But for, for me and myself, it was kind of a fun time where we were out there struggling through this. And I think that period's just about gone now. Uh, and I'm gonna miss that a little bit. But overall, it's a good thing. We're getting more people driving EVs. We're getting much more access. We're gonna have much better charging. So I'm a big fan of that. Special thanks to Electron for giving me the adapter here. And I think it's a great adapter. Go check it out. I'll have a link in the description. Uh, and you can go buy your own and, and test it out on your own GM or Ford or Rivian vehicles or others in the future. Keep following. I will have more charging related things coming up, especially on my level two charging for people who can't charge today. And I will see you all in the next video.